okay, the GDP number is here. It's 13.5%. The April, May, June number has come in at 13.5%, which is quite a disappointment. 16.2% uh, is where RBI stands. And at 13.5%, this looks like uh, a serious disappointment. Uh, the farm sector growth has not done too badly because everybody was expecting that to do badly because of the heat wave and a likely impact on uh, farm output. But that's come in fairly good at 4.5%. Mining sector at 6.5 is not so bad. Uh, again, these are all base effects. Uh, I think manufacturing has quite clearly disappointed with just a 4.8% growth. So manufacturing clearly has not recovered uh, the whole hog. Uh, construction sector at 16.8 has not done too badly. The GVA number has come in at 12.7. The CNBC TV18 poll was, I think, north of 13%, 13.5%. 13.6%. So the gross value added is also a disappointment. But uh, it is uh, the overall GDP number that will go down as a bit of a disappointment. We'd love to see whether the base has been revised. So, uh, I mean, uh, I have my sympathies for the experts who are joining us. Uh, we don't know whether the base numbers have been revised. Uh, let me invite our experts, Kaushik Das of Deutsche Bank, uh, Anubhuti Sahai of uh, Static Chartered Bank, D.K. Joshi, the chief economist from uh, Crisil, uh, are joining us. In a minute, we'll also be joined by Shaumya Kanti Ghosh, the chief economic advisor of State Bank of India. Gentlemen and Anubhuti, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Kaushik, uh, to you first. Uh, GDP, 13 and a half, a bit of a disappointment? Uh, Lata, we are not that disappointed. We had 14% growth, so I was expecting a little bit lower than what RTI was expecting, around 16.2%. Okay. So 13 and a half, 14 percent is within my range, and I had a GV, GVA forecast of about 12 percent. I okay. think you said that it has come at 12.7. That's right. These numbers are not that great a disappointment, and you know what is more important is uh, these are year-on-year -year numbers based on very favorable base effects. Uh, but even if you look at the sequential growth momentum from January, March to April, yes. June, in order to get a 13.5 percent. Uh, there has been quite a sequential, you know, uh, you know, increase in growth momentum, particularly because we came out of the Omicron and uh, there was pent up demand. And April, June, therefore, we saw growth kind of uh, increasing on a sequential basis also. As we get into the next quarter, July, September, as you talked about the core infrastructure growth coming down at 4.5%, I think growth would be at about 6% uh, from here on and then going down to about 5% and 4.5% in the second half of the fiscal year. So... Long story short, uh, in our view, uh, this is not that great a disappointment and it still indicates a good sequential momentum from January, March. Okay. Okay. Well, I can give you a few more numbers as well. Private final consumption uh, uh, expenditure has come in at 25.9%. Uh, okay. This is percentage of total. I'll give you the growth in just a minute. Uh, the uh, government final consumption growth is 1.3%. Uh, I'll give you the pi private final consumption. I think that number is right, 25.9. Government final consumption expenditure has grown rather meekly at 1.3%. And uh, capital formation is up 20%. Again, uh, as uh, Kaushik pointed out, that's more a base effect impact. Uh, I'll just come back to you with the other numbers. Uh, uh, capital formation, 20% higher. Government consumption, 1.3% higher. And private final consumption expenditure is 25.9%. Uh, that's uh, as far as year-on-year -year growth is concerned. I can just give you the uh, GD GVA estimates. Uh, uh, like I told you, agriculture has come in 4.5%. Mining is up 6.5%. Manufacturing, 4.8%. My sense is that's a bit of a disappointment. Uh, electricity and other utilities have come in 14.7% higher. That's a damn good number. Construction is up 16.8%. Uh, Trade hotels, transport and communication are up 25%. Uh, 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 you have uh, financial sector up 9.2% and public administration, defense and other services up 263 So that gives the 12.7%. Uh, Anubhuti Sahai, first thoughts? The numbers are slightly lower than our expectation, Lata. So we were looking at a GDP growth of 14%. Uh, having said that, if we, are, if we just look at the internals, I think it's a mixed story. Uh, from manufacturing sector, the growth is much better uh, than what we expected. And uh, that 
probably indicates that the manufacturing sector growth is now becoming more broad-based. Uh, you know, because if you simply look at the formal sector corporate earnings and adjust it for uh, high uh, inflation, uh, growth is coming uh, pretty low. So that's a good part. The other good part is uh, related to the public admin services, uh, which uh, you indicated grew at a double digit. Yeah. You also indicated that the government expenditure or expend, uh, you know, grew, grew just at very low single digit. Yes. If these two numbers are right, mm. then it probably indicates that the informal sector activity is picking up. And that, in my view, is a good news. Uh, we'll have to look at the internals. Third part, uh, where probably uh, you know I'm a little bit disappointed, is the trade uh, uh, sector growth. Okay. If it is just at 26 uh, percent, then uh, I'm not sure we are back uh, to the uh, you know we are back to the pre-pandemic level. So not such a good news on trade front, but probably that can become a growth driver uh, in the next few quarters. Uh, I agree with you. I think it is the sub. You know, the public administration uh, line, which uh, Anubhuti is referring to, is public administration, defense and other services. It is the other services, which is the informal part. And as she points out, if government final consumption expenditure is not too good, then the public ad number is probably contributed to by the other services, which could be personal services in formal sector, and that could be a positive. Uh, DK Joshi, I, uh, do you want me to read out the numbers again? Public ad up 26%, uh, financial services up 9.2%, trade hotels, uh, 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 transport, communication and broadcasting up 25.7%, uh, construction 16.8%, electricity and other utilities, gas, etc. 147 manufacturing 48 mining and quarrying 65 agriculture 45 uh, How do the numbers square up for you? Well, I think it's essentially a story of a rebound in contact-based services. And I think that has spilled over to private consumption also, I think, which uh, grew at 25%. Apart from that, I think the uh, the momentum in utilities has been there right through the pandemic. So I think it's not a surprise that uh, that that utilities have uh, show, uh, done pretty well uh, even, even in this quarter. Overall, I think the number is a little lower than we expected. We were expecting around... Uh, 15.2%. Uh, but I think uh, uh, this is a rebound and I think it's not very difficult to capture precisely how the economy will uh, will, will will grow. Uh, the, from now on, I think the growth uh, probably will uh, uh, be on a, uh, on, a, on a lower track because this exceptional base effect that you got uh, in the first quarter is not going to play out in the second and, and rest of the quarters. Uh, so I think my my sense is that uh, the 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 contact based service revival has spilled over to private consumption, particularly in urban areas as well. And I think that is getting reflected in the other services. I think which includes a host of services uh, from I think uh, uh, personal services as well. Okay. So I think that probably is these are the drivers. So it's a lopsided uh, recovery. Manufacturing is uh, is is still, uh, uh, I think, is, is still underperforming. I would say I, I overall, uh, and uh, the the construction is of course uh, government uh, uh, government led. Government okay. capex uh, uh, by the central government in the first quarter was was pretty high. I think okay. the growth was around fifty seven percent. States were lagging. So I think it's a it's a mixed story that has yielded okay. this this number. Oh, and uh, one minute, Mr. Joshi, I think. Uh, the previous year's numbers have been revised higher. I'm just looking at the previous, uh, you know, last year's data. Uh, we had been uh, uh, given to understand that uh, the uh, first quarter was 30.47 lakh crore. Is that the number you all have? 30.47 lakh crore was what we were working with. But now the new number we have for, for the previous quarter is 30.52 lakh crore. So my sense is that uh, there has been a slight upward revision to the first quarter of last year, and that perhaps accounts for the uh, maybe lower than expected uh, GDP number. If the Reserve Bank was working with 30.47 lakh crore as the uh, you know GDP in the uh, uh, April, May, June of 21, and if that has been revised higher to 30.52 lakh crore, that may explain a part of, I'm reading out GVA numbers over here, not GDP numbers, but uh, that may account for a bit of the disappointment. Uh, Kaushik, do you have the previous aggregate numbers? 
Lata, I don't have the details as yet, but what you're saying can make sense, particularly for the manufacturing sector. Okay. I mean, 4.8% growth year on year with such a positive base. If you look at the IIP number uh, in double digits, uh, okay. this kind of doesn't make sense. I mean, it's much lower than uh, what we would have expected for the GBA uh, manufacturing. So maybe there's some revision which has taken in the past, which has been seized. Previous, okay. uh, years manufacturing, manufacturing previous years. was uh, 5.43 lakh crore. That was the number we have last year. And uh, now the previous has become 5.77 lakh crore. So you're right, Kaushik. Yeah, so, 5.43 so, yeah, so. was what we were told last year. Uh, now yeah. we are being told that last year's number was actually 5.77. So that's a good 30,000 crores more. Yeah. So that makes sense. So that's why I'm saying like 5%, 4.8% year-on-year growth this year on manufacturing. It was not okay. making sense unless there was a revision of the past year, All which right. you explained. Okay. And we have to look at more details of these revisions and then try to see what kind of sequential uh, growth we've had. Uh, yeah. uh, but also one more thing which you should focus on is basically the nominal GDP growth. Because okay. if you remember, April, June was this quarter where we got 7.3% CPI growth and uh, WPI inflation was also right. in double digits of 15%. So the GDP deflator would have been very high. Okay. And therefore, unless nominal GDP has increased quite significantly, it would have squeezed the real GDP growth. Okay. Otherwise, probably the real GDP growth would have been higher. Yeah, so probably nominal, we'll get more details about the nominal GDP. Nominal GDP, as well, you're right, nominal later. GDP is 26.5% higher. So a great deal of it is accounted for by uh, prices. The real GDP, of course, is up 13.5%. Uh, 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 gentlemen, now I think we have Shomyo also joining us. Uh, Shomyo, we are in a bit of a jam here because it looks like the first quarter of last year has been revised higher. So then how does the 13.5% uh, GDP growth look to you? Uh, good evening, Lata. I think the, regarding the revision, let me just make my point clear. I think... As per the quarterly data, the customer is not to revise their earlier data and it is only in reverse in the month of February. Okay. So if I look into that point, I don't think revision is, has made a significant difference. So even if I assume that 30,000 crore has been a revision, mm. I think on a base of around 30 to 35 lakh crores number per quarter, I think this is a very small revision. Okay. The moot point, I think the number is uh, quite disappointing uh, to be, to say the least. The manufacturing numbers are significantly, uh, and I just got the data in front of me. I yeah. think in May there was a revision. This time there has been no revision. Okay. So I think that goes out of the window. And All the right. second thing is I think the manufacturing is very disappointing. And uh, uh, we are expecting a far higher number. 8.6% is very disappointing and uh, the results, the corporate results have not been that bad. So I think this uh, adds a twist to the story and the other sectors also, if you look into this, the core GBA has actually slowed down and has grown at 12.2%. And you're asking about the deflator, the deflator is 11.6%. So if I sum up all these numbers and if I assuming that the RBI projections of Q2, Q3, Q4 holds true, then... Okay. Uh, well, Shomyo, we will dial you up again. Uh, I think we just lost you. Uh, I'm sorry. I think it, the May revision was something I should have checked. Uh, and Shomyo says that there is no difference uh, from the May numbers. Uh, I just have the May number here, but it's uh, not very clear at the moment. Okay. If there isn't much of a difference, yeah, 30.52. I'm sorry. Uh, already in May, uh, the first quarter was revised to 30.52 and it has not been uh, revised since. So 30.52 lakh crore indeed is the previous number. There is no revision in the base. Uh, then 13 and a half, perhaps uh, we have a right to be a little disappointed. Kaushik is maybe a little disappointed. The others are a little more disappointed because I think the average we got was 15 and Reserve Bank stands at 16. Shomyo, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so you're right. 30.52 lakh crore. So no revision yes. in the base. So Please go ahead. No revision. So that makes that means that if we grow at the RBI projection of 6.2, 4.1, and 4% for the subsequent quarters, yes, we are ending the year with a growth rate of 6.7%. Oh. And our projection should also then move now closer to the 7% handle if if we assume that our projections are also hold out. So I think that makes the story a little bit disappointing in terms of the trade-off between the growth and the inflation right now. 
with inflation trending downwards and we're in a rate hike cycle and growth disappointing. I think it's re- it has disappointed. I think it will be a very delicate balance on the part of the policymakers going forward. Oh, this is not looking very good at all. Uh, you know, now that 13 and a half number looks uh, genuinely disappointing as uh, 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 Shomyo is explaining. If we go with this 13 and a half compared to Reserve Bank 16.2, for the current quarter, then uh, unless there is a, f- a fairly decent uptick in the coming quarters, we are going to end up with a 6.7% growth and not a 7.2% growth as was uh, estimated. Actually, uh, already the professional forecasters were not expecting 72 I think the last uh, forecast was 71 But now, with this first quarter number, we are going to get to perhaps less than 7% which could be a bit of a disappointment. Uh, uh, Anubhuti, did you have time to look at the numbers a little more? If you have it on your phone, uh, what is the bigger disappointment for you? Are you were anyway unhappy with the manufacturing numbers? Uh, no, I was actually happy with the oh, manufacturing, manufacturing numbers. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was uh, slightly uh, unhappy with the trade. We expected a much sharper recovery. 25% okay. looks good at the headline number, but uh, uh, you know we expected a slightly stronger number there. Uh, you know, on the whole, uh, I would say that you know, 13 and a half percent can still give us a seven percent growth uh, for the year, and the reason is that trade has, you know, it still has a lot of room to catch up. If we think about this quarter, growth is holding up pretty well despite what's happening across the world. So I think seven percent growth still looks possible to us unless something really uh, hits us in the uh, second half. Construction st- uh, sector activity, as pointed out, uh, cement, uh, steel, all those uh, productions are uh, doing uh, uh, pretty well. As you highlighted, uh, probably this quarter could have been bad from the agri perspective, but that has not turned out to be the case. So that probably also provides some kind of a support. And uh, if we exclude government mm. from this uh, particular GDP print, the private sector is clearly showing signs of pickup. Mm. And as far as this quarter is concerned, I think this quarter would have further made it uh, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, made it more widespread. I think, yes, to some extent, there is a disappointment because we were expecting a 14% GDP growth. But I wouldn't be thoroughly disappointed with just one uh, quarter number. What was your number, number, sorry? I Uh, don't think it will be too bad. uh, What was your number, Anubhuti? My GDP number for this quarter Mm. was at 14%. So it came at 135 Next quarter okay. number is six and a half percent. And as I said, there are a few other areas where All we right. can see some catch up okay. playing out in the next few quarters. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I have to take a commercial break. It's not a long one, just half a minute. We are back in a jiffy and we have more questions for our experts. Welcome back to our coverage of the macroeconomic numbers. We just have the big GDP number that has hit the screens and it is a bit of a disappointment at 13 and a half percent. The CNBC TV 18 poll stood at 15% and uh, the Reserve Bank uh, estimate or forecast was uh, 16.2%. Shami Kanti Ghosh, the Chief Economic Advisor of State Bank of India, was explaining to us that at this rate, uh, even if the other quarters remained as per the Reserve Bank forecast, we could be ending the year at 6.7% and not at 72 as is the Reserve Bank's current forecast. Uh, uh, we've been speaking with Kaushik Das of uh, Deutsche Bank, Anubhuti Sahai of Standard Chartered Bank, D.K. Joshi of Chrysal and Shaumik Adhikosh of State Bank of India. Uh, Mr. Joshi, did you have time to go through the numbers? Any further comments? Well, I think the uh, I, what I see in the numbers is also some sort of normalization because the sectors which were lagging, for instance, private consumption, private consumption uh, to GDP has gone back to 59%, so which means... This is this has grown well. So this was one of the lagging segments, I think, in 21-22. It I think this from the demand side. Mm-hmm. So that normalization is taking place. And second is I think the from the supply side, the normalization of uh, contact-based services. I think so. In a way, I think the growth may be a little lower uh, than what we expected. But I think the the uh, the unevenness in growth is somewhat reducing. I think because because uh, this uh, quarter was not functionally disrupted by COVID. Okay. Uh, Shomyo, could you go through the numbers a little more closely? In the, from the expenditure side, uh, is there any big disappointment in terms of private final consumption expenditure or uh, capital formation? 
No, if I look into the numbers carefully, uh, on the expenditure side, I think the gross fixed capital formation actually have grown at a decent 20% or yes. and the private funnel consumption expenditure has grown at around 25.9%. But and the government funnel consumption expenditure actually is stagnating, is almost uh, 1.3%, which is basically not grown at all. The important point to note over here is that if you actually look, and the overall nominal GDP is around, if I look at it, it's 26.7% in the first quarter, and with a deflator of around, I think, 12.6%. The important point to know is that if you look into the deflator sector wise, I think the disappointment has come in the mining sector, and I think. It's primarily because of the significant uh, inflationary trends in the first quarter, the commodity price cycle, which has possibly dented the, uh, the performance in this sector. But mm. as I as, uh, as I emphasize, the core GVA has expanded at 12.2 percent, which is basically excluding the government, and which was 24.6 percent in last quarter in the previous quarter of the in the Q1 FI22. So if I take all these factors into account, my sense is that this number is clearly a disappointment because uh, there was before this number came out i think there was two sides of the story i think one the side was that the number could actually outshine the rbi expectation of 7.2% yes. and the other side was that it could be falling short of that i think the trend is now clearly visible that the growth rate this year mm. i mean if we get 7.2% becomes the upper bound now and i think all numbers is likely to be revised downwards because uh, the as I explained, mm. at the same rate, it will be, will be just touching maybe 7% or below, even if there is an improvement in the numbers in the subsequent quarters. Okay. Fair point, uh, uh, Shomyo. And I just want to alert that, you know, when you look at private final consumption expenditure, if we can have that number on the board, uh, that looks like it is, you know, 25% higher than uh, last year. But, you know, last year already was a maimed quarter. We were just recovering from the year ago, which was a very bad quarter, the 2020 quarter. So the correct normal quarter we should be comparing ourselves with should be the 2019 first quarter, April, May, June. And at that time, private final consumption expenditure was 20 lakh crore. This is 2019. We are now at 2022 and it is 22 lakh crore. So it's just about 10% higher over three years so it's not a very good recovery. And that's what Shamika Ghosh is pointing out too. Uh, that, you know, the numbers look very big if you look at it only from year ago levels. But year ago was a partial recovery from a terrible base of 2020. And therefore, if you looked at a three-year compounded growth, then uh, this does not go in as a very robust uh, quarter. Uh, Kaushik Das, uh, any further comments from the numbers that you have? So, Lata, if there is no revision and, you know, you confirm that and Shomo also pointed to that. Yes. Then the manufacturing of, you know, 5% YOI is disappointing. It should have been higher. Uh, and that is where the weakness is. Otherwise, you should have got a higher number uh, as per GBA is concerned. Now, the thing is, the way to analyze this particular quarter data is more on a sequential basis, quarter on quarter, rather than looking at year on year. Year on year will not give you the whole story. And given the volatility in GDP data, I think 13 to 15 percent growth range. Uh, we should not, you know, kind of, you know, look into too much details and trying to think like why it is down a little bit here and there because India's GDP data can be very volatile and we can have revisions later and we can be, you know, anywhere uh, in that particular range. So as far as the range is concerned, with what you had as consensus and what you have got, mm. 13 and a half to 15 percent, I think doesn't change the narrative that you know we are in a sequential kind of up move in april june compared to january march Correct. but as we head more into the second half of the fiscal year growth will start slowing down and more so in fy24 as rbi's rate hikes start impacting as the global economy slows down more so seen from that perspective i think uh, it is also with respect to what expectations each person had with respect to this forecast like i had 14 percent so i'm not that greatly disappointed mm. i got 13.5 and our FI23 growth forecast is 7.1 percent. So I, I, I think that is broadly in line with what Anubhuti said. Okay. So you, you are still have 7 uh, Kaushik, 7 uh, yeah. Kaushik, I just want uh, uh, quick comments from everyone on whether you will change your full year forecast. Uh, Shaumyo, you think you might at this moment uh, change your forecast, right? 
Yeah, yes, our forecast will be revised. We'll look at the numbers closely. Okay. So there'll be a downward division in our forecast. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, that should be, uh, let's see what the Reserve Bank itself has to say uh, when they present uh, their uh, data ahead of uh, the next policy. Uh, uh, Dr. Joshi, will you be revising it uh, either ways? Well, it does create a downside bias, but we'll have to do the math before we come out Fair with point. a number. Fair point. So, downward bias from two experts. Uh, Anubhuti, yourself? Uh, we'll maintain 7% growth. That, okay, that 7. That is pretty, pretty good to us till now. Uh, Kaushik, you're standing at 7.1 and you don't change. No, I mean, I, I think it's broadly in line and okay. no need. And next quarter, we are looking at 6% and then 5%, Fair. 7.5%. So, it's broadly in line with our forecast. Okay, so your second half is stronger than what the Reserve Bank expects and therefore you think uh, we will make up... Uh, 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 what we have lost in the first quarter. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, Shaumyo, Mr. Joshi, uh, uh, Kaushik and Anubhuti, thank you very much for staying up for us on a holiday and a very important holiday in Mumbai and analysing the numbers for us. Uh, to summarise, uh, the numbers are a disappointment. They are lower than the CNBC TV18 poll, which itself at 15% was lower than the RBI projection of 16.2%. And uh, uh, the experts uh, believe, uh, Stormy Kandikosh in particular, that if you go with this kind of a number, first quarter number, the full year GDP number may have to be revised below 7%, probably 67 or thereabouts. Uh, 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 Mr. Joshi also believes there's going to be a downward bias. Uh, uh, sorry, Anubhuti and Kaushik Das are standing at around 7% and they may not revise the number. But there is a very good chance that this year we may not make it to the 7% mark, which is a bit of a scare. The other scare, of course, is that there could be a global slowdown. You know, China is not picking up as much as was expected and uh, the US also could slow down going by the pace of rate hikes that uh, Jerome Powell is talking about at Jackson Hole. If there is that kind of a global slowdown, then perhaps 7% could be a, a challenge for other reasons as well. The first one being the arithmetic challenge posed by the first quarter. Uh, so we wrap up on the note that the GDP numbers are slightly disappointing. Thank you very much for watching. There's lots of news and updates lined up for you.